self-similarity is a property that a figure can have that describes the fact that you could take part of the figure and sort of zoom in on it and get an idea of what the entire figure looks like. Uh, a very basic example might be if we had, say, a square. And again, as usual, pardon my lack of graphic artist skills. If we had a square and we were to take the square and divide it down the center in both directions, we'd end up with four squares. Then we could take any one of those four squares or all of those four squares, divide them down the center, and we have a figure that looks a little like this. More and more squares, right? But then each of the four corners resembles the original figure. These, this square right here, let's outline that in green, the top right hand square up here, then is the same shape, has a similar aspect to the original figure. And then of course as we continue on, each of these get divided into quarters. And then each of these squares here, which maybe we do that in orange, each of these squares here then can be zoomed in on to make another entire figure on which the process could be continued. So this figure is self-similar. Within portions of itself are figures that can represent the entire original figure. Now this is kind of fun as you get more and more complex because mathematically you can tell a computer to continue just generating something like this and see what happens as it gets more and more complex. And I picked up a few examples of that uh, from a, a Java site on the internet so I was going to show you a couple of those examples I thought you might find them kind of fun. This particular figure here, each triangle has the same length of its outer leg, the one that forms the outside of the figure here, but each of the long legs that go back in toward the center increase as the square root of a new number. So the first one is the square root of 1 and the square root of 2, and the second one is the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, and the third one is square root of 3, square root of 4, and so on. And as you continue iterations, the figure folds around itself like a seashell and just gets more and more complex as you continue on. And you can see eventually all we end up with with our little limited window here is a series of lines, but it's kind of a fun figure that shows that little concentric spiral and it's all just a matter of rotating that triangle and slightly increasing the length of the outside leg each time. Um, this one here, this is a, a labyrinth made out of thirds of each triangle and each time we cut that line into thirds and the triangle gets more and more complex until it essentially looks like it's a solid figure but you can see as you sort of back out through the the steps that each time each time it gets less and less complex until we're right back down to the original line we started with kind of fun of course the computer starts to slow down because it's actually calculating this thing each time it's not just randomly drawing in lines it's calculating the figure for each step this figure here is called the Koch Snowflake, and this one's actually in your text. You'll see that we start with just a regular triangle here, and then what we do is we take a copy of that triangle, and each of the corners then becomes its own triangle as we lay that triangle over itself. Now each corner is another triangle, and we do the same thing. We take the triangle that makes the corner, rotate it, and lay it on top of itself. Oops, wrong way. There we go. And that gives us even more points. Now we have sort of a hidden triangle here, and now we have all triangles around the outside, and we do the same thing again and the figure gets more and more complex in tinier and tinier points as we go on. Kind of a fun one. And then this last one, we have just a very wide letter H, and then off the end of each point, we add another letter H, and off the end of each point, we add another letter H. <laughs> and as it gets more and more complex, it starts to look like a, like a labyrinth or something, all formed by individual letter H's landing on top of each other. And you'll see as the figure starts to get more and more complex, you'll actually see that there are new H's inside of the other ones and you can still see the bigger H's with the littler ones making up the spaces in between as you get farther and farther in.